40 seconds left. Last and second. Seven, five, three, two, one. Okay, swap with your friend. Swap with your friend. You know the, the quiz. Whatever grade you give your friend, okay, they until you review it. Like last time, like first couple of quizzes, we see that sometimes people get ten, but the answer is wrong. It's just wrong. So you you get whatever you should get. Okay, we review it. Okay, just just grade it in the honest way. I want you to be honest, okay? Because it's not that much of a pressure. Eight, nine, ten, does that. All right. What is this one? Dolly low. Okay. So in the exam, if that is choices, okay, like I give you several choices, there will be always be penalty. If there is no choice given, there is no penalty for answering it wrong. Okay? But if there is a choice, like two or false, high or low, increase or decrease, there will be penalty. Okay? This one is rosary low. Huh? What about the second one? Progressive cavity pump. Huh? Where do you put that, Daniel? Progressive community pump. What about this one? Third one? Gear pump. Say gear pump. What about this one? Brain pump. What about the last one? Diaphragm. Who get all this correct? Tell me. Oh, okay. Not all of you. Why is that? Are you ready? This part is part of the last lecture. Okay, so it is part of the exam too. Okay, let's take a look at the first one. Five point, get the value of C in the following equation. P1 equal to C multiplied by P2, where P1 is the pressure in the unit of PSIG. And P2 is the gauge pressure in the unit of feet of water. Okay, the first one is PSIG, the second one is feet of water. The provided information is as follows. 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter equal to 62.4 something power per cubic foot equal to 8.3 power per gallon full stop. 12 inches equal to 1 foot. Usually the provided information show the expression of calculating C value, the final numerical value that need to be calculated by using a calculator is not needed. Okay, who think you get the correct answer? Oh, okay. Just just five of you, just that? Just six, seven, just that, just seven of you. So who who, who think? I, I don't know how to do this. Raise your hand. I didn't understand the question. The question is, find the value of C. What is <laughs> the question is, find the value of C. P1 is pressure in the unit of PSIG. P2 is gauge pressure in the unit of feet of water. That's the question. Is that not clear enough? Find the value of C. So how do I make it clearer? Can you advise me on that? Can you make it clear? Yeah. Clear. I think you should clear that C has, has the units as well. So C, if I tell you the unit, then... Uh, no, like say that you need to find the unit. You don't need to find the unit. Normally we don't 
Okay, a lot of the students, you may love that city, okay? So, that would be this kind of, is it clear now? Find the value of the user, still not clear? When the user or the people put P2, which is feed of water, this equation should, you should get PSIT immediately. So, feed of water multiplied by C equal to PSIT. Find value of C. Okay, how much is the value of C that you get? 1 over 2.31. Okay, 1 over 2.31. Who we'll get that? The answer of C is. Oh, uh, uh, 62.4 over 144. Is that what it is? That's the value of C. Who get that? Okay, that's correct. Who doesn't get that? Okay, let's, let's talk about how do we get that. How about it? How do we get that? <laughs> Alright. You see this pressure? P1. P1 is P S I T, right? Which is for PSI. How? Per loss. Inch squared. Alright. So if you want to convert this from how to inch square, what do I do? I want to convert from how to inch square to be how per square foot. I will multiply this by 144. Do you agree? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So then this will be, this whole thing will be how per square foot, right? And now I have to play with water density because I want to know how many feet of water. So that has to do with water density. I have three choice, 1,062 or 8.3. Who use 8.3? Don't use 8.3 because it's irrelevant. So use 62.4, that is how per cubic foot, right? So this number is how per foot square. So you divide it by 62.4 something that has you enough how per cubic foot. So that cancel with that, that cancel with that. So that becomes foot. That is why I can understand why you want to see the fourth page of the lecture. Because it is over here, right? It is over here, right? PSI multiplied by 144 divided by 62. So this is conversion from PSI to feet of water. If you want C value, I just put 62.4 on the right hand side and 144 to the bottom part. Just that. So it will be 62. 44 over 144. Is it crystal clear? Who get it wrong? Tell me. Who will get it right in the exam? Who who do you think you will get it right in the exam? So let's not let me put, not put this in the exam. Who will get it right? I'll put something easier. How about that? I can put this in the exam. So what I want you to realize is. Okay, give, give your friend score whatever he or she should get. Or, or not your friend, your, your classmate. Okay? Yeah. Alright, who, who, who get eight? Nine? Wait, how do you show it? So, okay. You get ten if your raw score is ten. If your raw score is seven, and the footnote, you see the footnote? If your raw score is 7, 8, or 9, you get 9. If your raw score is less than 7, like 6 and below, you get 8. So it's 8, 9, 10. How many people get 8? Okay. You should get 10 in the actual exam. Okay. Uh, I understand that uh, this may use some of the past time, but okay. In the homework that we have, it is 
uh, build completion, right? The, 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 the solution will be given all of them uh, as soon as no one with the excuse is or everyone submitted that. I expect it to be like this Friday. Okay? Who who plan to not submit it? The last homework. The last homework. We will, we, will, we will put the solution as soon as it's done, and then uh, those who didn't finish it or something, we just keep to zero. Or if you have university the skills, we may just uh, exclude it from the calculation so that everyone has a solution. How about that? How about that? Okay, this calculation, I expect you to be able to do it within five to ten minutes. Okay, this kind of thing, you should be able to do it within 5 to 10 minutes, alright? At most 15, there are several easy calculations that you should be able to do it quick. If you cannot practice, please, okay? I want everyone to graduate. Try to practice. The calculation, even though it's just like put the number in the calculator, try to practice and get it done quick and correct, okay? The exam already made it. It's not that difficult, but uh, I can. I expect you to be able to do it within two hours, but I give you two hours and thirty minutes in case something bad happens. Okay, you should be able to do it provided that you do your formula sheet. What do you put in your formula sheet? Unit conversion and every equation. What kind of equation do we have? For the for the hydrate, do we have Hammer-Schmidt equation? Yes, put that in. What else do you have for hydrate? Um, do we have something to calculate about how to read the graph, the enthalpy or something? Put that in, okay? You remember what is the BTU per hour? Those kind of calculation based on graph. So the next one, we have line heater. Line heater has what? Erosional velocity, okay? Actual velocity calculation, those equations put it in, okay? And compressor equation, that cost power equation, put those in, okay? Conversion factor, very important, have like this kind of thing, put it in, okay? Uh, Basically every equation, okay, except something that is look too much. Like there's a coefficient in the Brown equation, the k value. If you need to use it, I will give the k constant. Okay, but I don't. I never give you the actual equation. Maybe if I give you next Tuesday, you can see the first page of the exam. Okay, I try to finish it. Let's review about the exam rule. Who don't know the exam rule yet? What is the rule of this exam? It is in the syllabus, okay? Exam. Five to seven thirty, okay? We don't have class next Thursday. Uh, this exam call for 30% or 30 point of the grade. If you mess up, don't worry about it too much because the total score is 112, okay, 112. We don't we don't carry anything, you get what you get, okay? And then we divide it by the maximum score multiplied by 30. We cap it at the end. So if you get more than 100, you can get a plus, okay? Uh, example you see, if you miss the exam with no university skills, you get zero. Missing final exam with university skills, you get in complete grade. Missing midterm exam with the university skills will result in the use of the final exam score to substitute the midterm score. Alright? Exam rule, bring your driver license. Bring your driver license. Okay. Other ID, okay. Text and text ID or some photo ID. Backpack against the wall, cell phone in them. Anyone caught with cell phone will be removed from the exam. And given and F for the cost, okay? Pencil or pen, straight edge, approved calculator. Only one calculator is allowed. If you use 
two calculator is my lab. What do I want to do? Do I care about the NCES calculator? The non programmable calculator. The non programmable calculator. Uh, I put that so that you don't have to buy a new calculator. Submit exam one by one at a time. Okay? If you are done, but other student is submitting, raise your hand so we go pick it up. So near the end, we will ask you to just sit in the exam, like last five minutes. If you want to submit it, don't come. Before that, submit it one by one, please. Okay, just one by one. Uh, you have to stop doing the exam when the time stop. <clears throat> okay, about the information sheet, it has to be F5 by 11 inch paper, information on one side, or two pages with information on both sides. Information sheet used during both exam must be your own handwriting. Okay, must be your own handwriting. Yes, question. It must not be printed from a computer or other student handwriting. <laughs> not type it, no. If you type it, okay. You will get F for the course if you fail to comply with this requirement. Number of pages and handwriting rule. Handwriting rule. Because the evaluation is considered as a cheating by getting an unfair advantage over other student. The purpose of having you write it on the information sheet is that I can make the exam easier than what I can, okay? It doesn't need to be that hard. I make sure that you learn it. When, when you write it, you learn it already, right? And when you learn it, the exam doesn't need to be that hard and you can pass, okay? If it is open book exam, you want open book exam? You have to print all those scrap out. I just make the exam as difficult as it, it should. Not too difficult, and it's three hours, and those who have two eggs will be six hours, or we can have five and ten or something like other cards. So you, you have done that before, right? The exam is very, very long time. Huh? I, I don't want to do that unless you want to, okay? Your own handwriting, not typing, okay? Good? If you type, okay, I will either take it from you. I'll give you the grade of F because you don't comply with this rule. Very easy rule. Okay? And everyone is on notice. That class, where is that class? What class? Oh, you're there. And then who's missing? Who's missing? Alec J. Jessic. A L E C. Middle name J. Last name J A S I K. Where he normally is it? Oh, there or what? Uh, so that, okay. Uh, I'll try to upload the video as soon as I can so that he didn't know about that. Okay, let's go back to pump. Okay. Can anyone tell me why do we need to learn about pump? How is that related to facility design? How is that related to saving the company money? Anyone want to help me with that? In draw. <laughs> why do we need to learn about pump? You don't know. Okay, so which company that you're going to work with? <laughs> okay, let's, let's move on. Arif, Ahmed, what do we need to learn about PAM? So we can design the right equipment for the company, so uh, spending a ton of money, we can save the company some money. Okay, but most of the time when you... <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Most of the time when you buy the PAM, you just tell them, here's the flow rate, here's the pressure, this is the pressure that we need. Just that, and they will sign you the PAM. Why do we need to know about it? We can double check. Or if, if, it, if you don't know about it, they don't need to hire you, right? If anyone can do it, it's not anyone can do it. It's just you who can do it, okay? You will eventually have to buy a pump. Where do we use pump in the facility? Cesar Armendariz. <laughs> yes, Cesar. Where? Where? Have you ever seen a pump in OTC? 
crazy. <laughs> Mr. Caesar. <laughs> you keep telling me, what's your name, sir? What's your name? Huh? Riz? Louis. Rodriguez? Mr. Rodriguez. Louis Rodriguez. Where do you see the pump? Mr. Rolling Gas on his campus. They recirculate the pump just in case you have any solids or like water in your oil. You recirculate your oil for like several years. Where else? Uh, the life unit. What is the full name of life unit? Cancer uh, <laughs> 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 transfer. <laughs> Alright, review the past material, okay? We need a pump. Sometimes we pump to the water disposal well, right? The ultimate question is, what type of pump do we need? Do we need a difficult pump? Do we need triplex pump? Do we need displacement? Rain pump? Diaphragm pump? Yes, sir. H pump. H pump. Uh, is it positive displacement or? I, I have this question before. I, I didn't put it over there. I, I'll check with Mr. Buddha one more time. Okay. Yes, we have edge palm and it looks very big. Okay. okay, I'll give you answer next time. <laughs> Alright, about the palm, we have this palm curve. One thing to know is, palm curve is a relationship between pressure and flow rate. If we have restriction, a lot of restriction, we cannot go flow fast. If we have less restriction, we can flow fast. That is true for centrifugal pump. For PD pump, it's not quite sensitive to the restriction. The restriction means a bad pressure on the discharge side. If you have a lot of pressure on the discharge side, look, if you have this much pressure on the discharge side, for the low viscosity fluid, we can flow less. If we have less pressure on the discharge side, we can flow faster. So this means when I buy a certain pump, they tell us, hey, this do 10 gallons per minute, 50 gallons per minute. You will need to ask at what head pressure, okay? When it flow, 50 gallons per minute at what head pressure? Because if the head pressure is high, you have a, the, the pipe is so small, you have a lot of restriction, and the pressure of in that pipe is expected to be 100 feet. So at the head of 100 feet, Will it pump at 50 gallon per minute or GPM? No, it will pump less, right? It may pump, okay, uh, 50 gallon per minute at the head pressure of 10 feet of water, for example. So what you actually need is pump curve, okay? What do we do with the pump curve? Number one, we estimate what is the pressure drop in the pipe, okay? When you know the pressure drop in the pipe, let's say you want to flow it at 50 gallon per minute. You calculate, later we will learn how to do that. We calculate and find out what is the pressure drop in the pipe at 50, 50 gallon per minute. When you find that pressure drop, you let look at the pump curve, okay? At 50, uh, at that pressure drop, maybe 15 PSI, what is the flow rate that it can produce? Will it produce more than the rate that you want or is less? If it produces less than the rate that you want, this means it, that pump won't deliver at that flow rate when the pipe is that size. Okay? That's how you size it. But first, let's take a look at the type of the pipe. Viscosity matter. If we put viscous fluid in and centrifugal pump, it doesn't pump that quick for the viscous fluid. What happens? The pump curve shifts. We can produce less. Okay? Less flow rate. Okay? If you want the pump that not quite sensitive to the pressure drop, not quite sensitive to the viscosity, use positive displacement pump, PD type. Any PD type like gear pump, low pump, vein pump, those things is PD type. The reason that it's not quite sensitive for the restriction in the pipe because it can break the pipe. If you close the valve, it will mechanically move the certain volume forward. If you block the outlet, it breaks the pipe. That's what it is. On the pump itself break. Okay? Alright, <clears throat> pump efficiency. The efficiency of the pump, you can see that it depends on viscosity. Sometimes they tell 
set this probe, okay? Uh, set this probe is uh, what? What kind of viscosity? Dynamic viscosity, kinematic viscosity. It's mu over rho, right? Set this probe is kind of mu over rho. It's not set by anything. It's, it's not mu. So be careful with that. Look at the pump efficiency. The pump efficiency go down and the viscosity of fluid go up, right? We need this kind of shot, all right, to size the pump. <clears throat> the pump, centrifugal pump, it's spin and it's coming out. What you need to know is where is the inlet? The inlet is at the eye, at the middle, okay? The outlet is on the top. Why do we need to know that? So that we pump it correctly if you need to, or uh, you don't look bad when somebody else asks you what is this, what is that. Okay, this is where it go inside, it goes inside the middle, when it come out, the flow area increase, when the flow area increase, it flows slower. A little bit slower, when it flows a little bit slower, pressure go up, according to the uh, battery law. Okay, this pump curve also depends on the speed of the pump. Okay. See the pump curve shift toward the higher Q and H. Q is flow rate, H is head. As the pump speed increase, if you have a different size of motor and it spins faster, okay, it deliver more like that. If it spins slower, it delivers less. Okay, the pump curve shift based on that RPM. Alright. Uh, system pump. Interaction, okay, system curve is head required by the system increase at Q increase. So this is a system curve. System curve, basically, it tells us pressure drop with flow rate. Pressure drop with flow rate. What is the formula for pressure drop in the pipe? Frictional pressure loss in the pipe, how do we calculate it? Who know that? Are you prepared for the FE exam? Or you already passed it or something? Uh, uh, you don't care? Olu what will say ye P Bolokan? Mr. Bolokan, right? Okay, what is the formula for friction or pressure loss? Uh, I don't remember, but there's a slide, there's an equation for it. There's an equation for it. Of course, there's equation for it. Can you explain the calculation step? Do we look at the sharp get friction factor, Mr. Bolokan? Yeah, it has to do with Reynolds number and like certain number. Alright, alright, alright. Thank you, sir. So we calculate Reynolds number. From the Reynolds number, we look at the sharp to get friction factor. From the friction factor, we put the, in the equation to F rho v square over d equal to minus dp dz. We will talk about that equation.